Welcome back for another video tutorial brought to you by GraphicDesignerTips.com. Uh, what I want to speak about today is how to apply a stroke to a uh, any kind of text or any elements in your Adobe Illustrator layout. So um, on the screen right now is a graphic that I produced uh, for the purpose of this tutorial. And it does not have any stroke on the letter stroke. Um, it does have a shadow, but we're going to change that uh, in the example below. So I'm going to come down here and I'm actually going to copy that that word stroke and then later on I'm going to show how to create a stroke on an image and what a stroke basically is is it's out it's outlining any kind of an element so uh, you have two things that make up this this word right here you have a fill and you can have a stroke there is no stroke on this but if you come over here you're going to see the fill is always on the top left and the stroke is on the bottom right so if you want to make your uh, your default fill and stroke you're gonna hit this little white and black stroke right in the corner and it's gonna automatically make sure that the stroke is black and the fill is white now if I zoom in here you're going to notice that when I turn when I take this stroke away and I put it back on what it actually does is when you directly add a stroke on anything it cuts out the element just a little bit so it's actually taking some of your text away or your image so if say you put a stroke on that uh, a sixteenth uh, of an inch okay that's how thick your stroke is uh, well actually let's do let's do by points because that's how the strokes are, are read if you have them set like that and that's general um, say your stroke is one point well what's really happening is is a half a point of that stroke is hanging off the edge and a half a point the other half a point that makes that one point up actually took away from your element so uh, just know that because when creating text what you want to do is uh, you, you want to select the element that you have if you want to put a stroke on it and you want to copy and you want to hit command B to copy in back alright so I'm gonna click off this real quick and if you see now there's one right behind it and while I have the top one selected I'm gonna hit command 2 to lock it and I'm gonna select the bottom one and now I'm gonna add that stroke again and you're gonna notice that if I zoom in again and I undo and redo it did not take anything away from the white so that's very important for when you're when you have like smaller headlines that you want like to stand off a canvas and you don't want it taken away and cutting your font out and you know like I said when they're small it's gonna make your fonts harder to read and it's gonna look kinda of funky so the stroke is gonna start overpowering uh, the actual word um, so now what you can do is now that you have that uh, you can apply a drop shadow just to make it come off the canvas a little bit and voila that's how you do strokes uh, with text um, we could do the same thing with an image so say we come over here and we make like a rounded rectangle alright we can make that rounded rectangle and select that select that image make sure the rectangles on top that's how you do a clipping mask I have another video on clipping masks if you don't know and you can either right click or hit control click or come up to object make clipping ma or clipping mask make excuse me alright so now that we have this if you notice that some of the edges are really light and in some cases you know you're not gonna really want that um, on top of color you can see the difference it looks pretty good even the even the fact that the edges are white but if you're using it on a white document you're gonna to wanna to put some kind of a stroke on here. Um, it's up to your discretion whether you wanna put the stroke on this or you wanna put it behind it like I did on the text. I like to do that with text just because I don't like it taking away my text at all. Uh, in a clipping mask, I can really you know move my image around and, and make it smaller within there so just to kind of accommodate for that. So I'm gonna select this image and I'm going to add a black stroke onto this and it does the same exact thing. So um, we can add a shadow on here and we can even pull this back up to this document and strokes just add a little bit of you know something to a piece um, I mean even without a stroke uh, things can look nice but you know in a lot of cases I do I do like to use stroke I don't like to do it heavy because uh, that's when things start to get a little messy looking um, Right. So, okay. Now that I have my stroke palette open, I'm going to show you a couple things that uh, I usually do. Um, 
if you see how the points are, because this obviously this font was not a rounded font, uh, it's a hard edged font, and on the corners uh, they come to sharp, you know, they're sharp corners. So uh, if we want to round them, we can do a round join right here, and well, actually while I have it selected, that'd be good. Uh, it's locked. Oh, it's not locked. It's just it's got to render through that that uh, filter sometimes the uh, the drop shadow. So. Okay, there we go. We have some rounded corners, and it looks a little bit nicer and softer. Um, there's a couple other options you can check out in here. I don't use too much, but uh, you can play around. You'll get like a beveled edge also. And another thing that stroking can do is if you have a line, and say that line is white, it'll be much easier to see on here. Uh, we would come over here, and we can make it we can make it thicker, or we can make it thinner. And miter limit has to do with actually, um, I've seen this before on like text, and sometimes when you start to uh, increase a stroke on text, you'll get these like, uh, the only way I can describe them is like, it's like pointy edges sticking out, They're almost like crystals sticking out. So uh, when you lower your miter limit, that takes that problem away. Um, I'm not even sure how to actually do that problem right now, so I'm kind of just going off, off um, I'm just kind of just going, uh, you know, doing this video tutorial real quickly. So I wasn't even planning on talking about miter. But um, dashed lines is another thing you can do. Say you're making a menu and you don't want to go into InDesign and use tabs. Uh, you can make a line, a stroke, and you can make it dashed. Now, on my Mac, I can actually, I can hit the up arrow right here in this box and it'll automatically add one. Uh, you might be able to still do that on a PC. Uh, but I'm gonna add a dash of like 12 points. Um, I'm gonna add a gap, okay? Because maybe you want the gap to be really small or maybe you want it to be really big. So uh, you want a dotted line like that. And the dash is going to add a secondary dash uh, right, after every, right after that first line. So it's really just playing around with these with these uh, with these lines just to kind of get what you're looking for but generally you know you're most of the times you're just gonna use solid lines or you're gonna dash them just a little bit so um, but yeah that's uh, that's how you do a line and stroke on images stroke on text uh, da, da, da. that is it on strokes uh, I'm just trying to think uh, if there's anything else um, but strokes are just it's just another way another accent you can put um, you know as long as you like I said try to make them nice and minimal you don't want to go overkill with your strokes so uh, that's it guys graphicdesignertips.com I uh, hope you're getting something out of these tutorials uh, and that's it visit our website and have a great day peace